friends, it's Gwen and I am back today with a super quick tutorial for you all. I am going to do some cut file cutting. Got my silhouette out uh, and I'm going to cut some files and I thought I would show you how I go about doing that. I do get asked this a lot from those of you who are just starting out with cut files. So I want to show you how I go about doing it for the cut to you cut file designs. So what I have here is a downloaded file that I have popped onto my computer. So you, when you download them, you will get to choose where you save the file to. If you don't choose, it's probably something in your computer settings. I know on my Mac, this is a Mac, um, I know on my Mac it goes automatically to the downloads folder if I don't tell it where I want it to go. So I've popped this one in this little folder called tutorial ready for you uh, today. And, and you'll notice here too, it's a .zip file. If I try and put this file into Silhouette Studio, it will not work, it will break. What you need to do is unzip it. And on a Mac, that's simply double clicking it. You might need an unzipping software if you're on a Microsoft or a Dell or whatever, like a standard computer. You might need a program like WinZip, which will unzip the files for you. Uh, so you'll need to look into that. You may already have it. It's generally free as well. So you can see now that the file is unzipped and it's in a folder. And if I double click this here, you can then see the three file formats. So JPEG, PNG and SVG. I prefer, even though uh, you might notice here that I'm running business edition. So on the business edition of the software, you can use SVGs. I prefer to use the PNG. Uh, it's how I've always done it. It's how I like to do it. So there's that. Uh, PNG will work if you're on the free software. If you try and use the SVG and you're not upgraded to the business edition, it will not work. So PNG is your friend. So that's the one that we want to use. And I'm just making a note of where that is saved. Okay, so across to the actual silhouette software, we're going to go file open. And then we're going to open it where we just saved it. So we know where it is and it's right there, PNG. And so that's it there now. Now it will not cut yet. We haven't told the machine where the cut lines are. So to do that, you wanna go over to this menu here and this one that looks a bit like a butterfly, I think. Click on that. And this is your trace window. So then you want to choose select trace area. So I'm clicking on that. My computer's a bit slow today. Um, and then, so this has now got, see the little cross on my mouse? It's not a pointer anymore, it's a little cross. What you wanna do is click and then drag and drop the area over all of the cut file. And what you'll see here is that it goes bright yellow. That's the area that's identified that it wants to cut. You can mess around with the settings here a little bit. If you find that you're working on a super fine detailed cut file, you may need to fuss with this, but I can't think of a single one of mine that that has been necessary. I do try to make the files a really lovely big size and I try to make them in a way, you know, in the background that makes it very easy for the software to tell what needs to be cut and what doesn't. So I don't feel like you'll need that, but maybe just in case. Okay, so I'm happy with that, how that looks. And I'm going to choose here, trace. And now it kind of looks like it didn't do anything, right? It's like, hang on a minute, it's not the same. It's sort of the same. Did that work? Yes, it did. You might notice here now that there's some red lines. They're your cutting lines. So if you click somewhere that's sort of away from the actual uh, design and then drag, you can drag this part off there. See how that's moving off there? Then you can select it. So see how it's now got the um, frame around it? It's now selected and you can hit delete. And this, friends, is the actual cut file that you're going to cut. And from here, 
this is where you can think about whether you want to resize it. So I'm actually going to use this lovely and big so you can resize it. You can also from here, um, I just like to go control C or command C on Mac, command V, sorry, my hands in the way there to copy and paste it. If you want to, you know, make a pattern or replicate the design, if you want to mirror, Things or you want to change like if you got obviously for text you wouldn't do that but if you had like a floral and you were like oh I wish the floral part was on the other side you can use this replicate box here this menu replicate and it does all kinds of things like mirrors it to the left see how it's backwards now um, it you can do grid so if you've got like a repeat if you want to make a repeating pattern you can use um, this one rows and columns and you can even use this one, fill the page. If you've got lots and you just want to fill the page up with them, it will do that as well. So I am going to get cutting this one. So I'll delete all of those. What you can do, so I'm just dragging and dropping this corner, making sure um, don't use this one. See how that's changing the ratio of the design? You don't want to do that. Uh, and if you make a mistake, Command Z undoes. Uh, or Control Z would be on a regular computer. Okay, so I'm going to resize this. Let's make it on it quite big. And I also actually want it in the center. So I'm going to choose this little icon up here, which is center to page. And then I'm pretty happy with that. What I'll now do, I forgot to put my paper in. One second, let me put... Oh, oh I bumped the camera as I got up. <laughs> Um, let me pop my paper in here. So I'm running today, I'm using my Cameo 4. It's uh, wireless at the moment. This wire, this cable here is for my actual designs. I keep them all backed up on a separate uh, drive. So this is just like a little Samsung drive. I would recommend you definitely have at least two copies of all of your files if you don't want to lose them because uh, they're not always you know with the stores they're not always available in you know in five years time if you message a store owner and tell them that you lost all your files i'm pretty sure they're not going to be able to help you so uh yeah so make sure you keep a, a at least one extra backup of all of your design so here is this one. Oh, I want to say too, if you're not aware, this was actually one of our freebies just recently. So I will leave a link in the description box below if you're not already on the newsletter subscribers list. So it's just an email list I send, oh, maybe three or four a month, one a week max. And uh, on one, at least one of those a month, uh, there is a free cut file. So jump on that there's always lots of inspiration and ideas and i do it's sort of I, I find that my email is a little bit more personal i do share a little bit more uh, of my personal creating and what's happening in my email rather than here on the youtubes so let's get cutting so we're gonna go send button up here i'll move this out of the way now i get asked a lot too about this I'm running the Auto Blade Cameo 4 and then the Auto Blade. And I like to run my force. Um, oh, yes, I'm also using American Crafts playing cardstock for this one. Uh, I have also got the premium cardstock, but I just tend to use this cheaper stuff actually. Uh, so, force is 22. This is where the magic happens, I think. This is my, like, I, I think this is the real deal. Passes, you're going to go two. Don't do one pass, do two, because I feel like it gives you a much cleaner cut. And then also, I don't know what this setting is called. This one here, this little triangle. Make sure that that is on. And that, I wish I knew the name of that, but I don't. But what it is, is when the blade gets to, say, a point like this one here, it goes ever so slightly past it before it goes, oh, it's probably this one here, actually. One of the, any of these like points where it's not, it's not gonna cut into the design, but what it's gonna do is go ever so slightly past where it needs to so that your cuts are nice and clean. Hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, make sure that's on. Uh, so 22 
passes to speed. I have it for, you could probably go a bit faster. Sometimes I do up that if I have a lot to cut. But today I'm just cutting this one. So this four will be good. Uh, my cameo is ready and I'm just going to hit send. And there we go, the sweet sound of the cameo for cutting. There we go. <laughs> so I'll scooch this out of the way so you can see. There it is. It's gonna cut my design. It'll probably take oh, maybe 10 minutes or so. So what I will do is I'll keep this footage running but I'll fast forward it so you don't have to sit here for 10 minutes watching the cameo do its thing. Okay, so that's finished cutting. I'm not sure why it... Oh, I didn't finish cutting. I don't know what happened there. Okay, so I'm going to try this again. I've actually hooked up I'm going to see this. I'm now using the connected. So that's the Bluetooth. This is the physical connection. Let's give it another try. Oh, the joys of flaky internet. Okay, so I'm just going to check this again. 22, two passes. I'm going to increase this to five because now I'm impatient. Uh, okay, send. Okay, so that looks better. <laughs> Here it is. So now we get the super rewarding part. What I do want to share too is you can see on my mat, see how I've got little pieces of washi tape? I use that as a bit of an insurance policy. <laughs> uh, I reuse my mats a lot, so and I actually prefer them to be not too sticky because when they're super sticky, it takes forever to cut to get the cut file off. So I prefer to have the mats less sticky and then add the washi tape as a bit of an insurance backup. So this should come off pretty easily. Oh, I find this, this bit I like. This is the bit that's fun. Peeling it away <laughs> to see the design. Gonna come. There we go. This one's quite a solid one too, so it's super easy to, to have come off because the lines are quite wide. And then I just pull out, and when I pull out the inner parts, I always pull them out from towards the back. And that's just so that if anything, any of the paper kind of tears a little bit, it's on the back of the design, not the front. And so there it is. That's how I cut a cut file from a cut to you. It's time to get creating. Uh, thank you for being here, my creative friends, and I'll see you all in the next video. Until then, bye.